Dear Rentals Club members, thank you for joining us. Today we have the pleasure of having Justin Ford. And Justin is an expert in the field of security and safety for vacation rentals. Um, you'll see that he's a, not only a great expert, but he knows a lot, quite a few things about um, vacation rentals, having been a property manager himself. We'll be talking about the difference between security and safety. We'll also talk about the differences as well in Europe, in the US, when it comes to perception of risks and to what we're actually doing. Without further ado, Justin, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me here. So as I said, you, you were quite the expert and you have this amazing background when you put together, you have these things coming together that make you one of the most sought after experts in, in the field. So can you share a bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. You know, uh, it is a unique background. I, I don't think there's anybody else out there who's kind of followed the path that I have. But if there is, I'd like to meet him. I need some help. Um, but I uh, served in the U.S. Coast Guard. I was a boating safety inspector. I actually did safety inspections on fishing vessels and commercial vessels for a number of years. So I had that background of checking things for safety. And then uh, after the Coast Guard, I actually got into vacation rentals via boat rentals. That was my first start. And uh, it's it, interesting, most people go real estate into rentals. I went boat rentals into home rentals. And um, after doing uh, home rentals and being a property manager, I've been doing that now for over 20 years. Um, I was also a firefighter and I combined all that experience together, 15 years as a firefighter, over 20 years as a property manager, and then that background in the Coast Guard and uh, really put that to work, um, focusing on safety in the short-term rental industry. Exactly. So safety and security are not exactly the same thing, right? We hear about no. safety, security and trust. And for example, Airbnb has been running into issues where people talk about safety. And another one is also cleanliness. Now it's also a safety topic. So these are not the same things. So I'd love you to help us understand the differences between each of these words. Yeah, so I think that there's three focuses, and they've been getting skewed together a lot lately. Uh, security, obviously, first and foremost, um, when you're talking about security, it's been in the news a lot lately. You know, how secure a neighborhood is the rental in? Uh, do the doors and windows locked? Ring cameras, security cameras, that type of stuff. Um, that's security for short-term rentals, and that's something that's very important. Uh, health is really what COVID, I think, is all about when it comes to short-term rentals. How healthy can the guests be when they're staying there? Are they going to get sick because the cleaning procedures aren't uh, attended to properly? What type of cleaning procedures are done to ensure the guests can have a healthy stay? And then safety, which has been used for everything. Safety is a basic core uh, focus in a short-term rental that addresses things that are going to ensure that the guest doesn't get injured or hurt or worse dies because of an accident in the rental due to carelessness in the way that the rental is set up. So, we, so, to, so these are very distinct things. And, and maybe to give some color, what, what, are, what are the things you've seen or like a few examples or one big example of what, what it really means at a vacation rental? Because uh, we, we're, we're talking a bit, but uh, sometimes you know, watching what you do and I've seen videos of you walking around houses, walking around vacation rentals. And I'm like, wow, well, I had not realized that running a vacation rental was like, you know, basically putting my guests into a minefield, right? So, what are examples of are really uh, things that people should be aware of and that they just think, yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you know, it's a great point. Um, a lot of people who, I haven't met anybody, maybe you have, but they said, when I grow up, I want to be a vacation rental manager. Um, this is something that's new. It's only become really big in the past 10 years, even though obviously it's been around for a lot longer than that. Um, so when you look at typical careers that people choose, there's tons of education and training. You know, you, a doctor doesn't get to touch a patient for six years. A pilot doesn't get to fly a plane until he's gone through everything. And yet so many of us have jumped into the vacation rental industry with just assuming that, well, I know what I'm doing. I, I live in a house. I spend 50% of my life in a house. I'm an expert on that. I can run it out. I know how to pick out the right linens and I know how to paint the room the right way and put the right amenities in. And they miss out on something very key to that. And that has to do with their familiarity of what they're used to with the way a house operates versus paying people that are coming from all over the world. Um, one of the greatest examples that I like to talk about of this, there was a family 
um, from Chicago, Illinois, lived in a condo, townhouse type of building. They didn't have a wood stove. They didn't have a fireplace. They didn't have matches. And they raised their children there. They never had to talk about fire and fire safety and matches and candles because that's just not something they had in their house. And then they went and rented a vacation rental in New England. And um, the two kids, four and seven, ended up catching the house on fire because they found some matches and started playing with them. And the host and the owner of that rental property never even thought about that. They thought, hey, let's leave matches out in case people want to, you know, light a birthday cake or make a fire. And yet here this fire burns the house down and it killed the grandfather and the dad. And so that really highlights, you don't know who's coming to stay. You don't know what their background is. You don't know that they may not be able to walk well in a low lighting situation, that they might be more susceptible to trips and falls than other people. You've got to step back and you've got to prepare your house to make sure that when people are staying in it, that they're going to be safe from every different angle. I think that's that's very interesting what, what you're saying here as well is that I think, for example, about vacation rentals, luxury ones in on some Caribbean islands that I may know a bit. Uh, when you, right now, for example, we are refurbishing one of our rentals, right? And there's, you know, there's it's super like the design's amazing. We have you know boutique designer furniture things from Italy, beautiful, right? But the idea that we should have like a fire extinguisher on the wall or that uh, you know, the pool should have some kind of protection railings or marking to help. I mean, like that would make my you know, architect jump, uh, interior architect jump and say, that's just terrible. So what are, how do you balance this out with people telling you, no, you know what, it's just security. Yeah, it's important. It doesn't, does not look great. It doesn't, you know, we run into that one all the time, especially on the fire extinguishers. Nobody wants to put a fire extinguisher out in their kitchen that they've done all this beautiful work to make look perfect and just the right granite and just the right, you know, backsplash and hundreds of dollars investment in this wonderful faucet. And then we're going to put an ugly fire extinguisher next to it. But you just got to accept that if you're inviting the paying public in, you have now made this into a commercial enterprise. Mm. And you're really no different from that sense from a hotel. Now, if you go stay in a hotel, what's out in the hallway? Fire extinguishers. Because they're important because there have been fires. And we see fires every single day in the United States in short-term rentals. Just imagine when you expand that around the world into Canada, Mexico, Greece, England. I mean, they're happening all the time. And there's different ways. And that's one of the things that I've worked really hard on is trying to find ways to balance that. So I'm not a strict, you know, you have to mount this fire extinguisher. It has to be red and it has to be right here. There's some things that we can do to be creative and make sure that it meets some of the aesthetics that people want to have in their short-term rental while balancing the safety needs that they have there. But you've got to, you've got to address it. You've got to find a way to come up with something that protects and cares for your guests. Because when you don't, right now and you just have to google this google vacation rental accident there are pages and pages and pages of lawyers out there right now that are hunting for clients and they are catching clients left and right because there are so many accidents and that litigation is what will end your short-term rental career very quickly so it's very important to understand that accidents are happening lawyers want to take all your money away from you from the accidents that are happening and there are things that you can do to protect yourself to make sure that that doesn't happen very easily. And do you think that, of course, it's big in the U.S., right? And it's kind of a yeah. risk, no, not, not the risk, but actually that the fact that not only you are putting your guests at risk, but you also, you know, you could be sued and for kind of risk that could be happening. Do you think it's bigger in the U.S. than in Europe? And that would explain maybe why it's maybe so, so hard sometimes to tell European property managers, you should actually do something about it. What's your explanation you know, here in this perception? Yeah. It's interesting. I did some consulting for the large, one of the largest OTAs in the world. I won't say their name, but you can just imagine there's only a few of them out there. And the first thing that they said to me is, yeah, we're concerned about North America, but we got some real problems in Greece and Mexico. And accidents are happening all over. I just saw where there was a pool drowning in Spain um, at a holiday vacation rental um, that did not have any protection around it. And we just saw, too, where a fire in the UK at a short-term rental happened. The guests were out still drinking wine and had no idea the house was on fire because there, were, because there was no smoke detectors. Wow. Um, the UK, I think, 
is a leader in the world. When I've been to the UK and Ireland, I'm always very impressed with a lot of the safety features, safety blankets. There's a lot of safety inspections. There's some opportunities to do better in the UK and Ireland. But these accidents are happening all over the world. And yeah, Mexico is a bad place. Um, we've seen a lot of really dangerous accidents down there. And uh, I was down there last November. And it scares me to death to see some of the things that are um, not in place from a safety point of view. So we, we talked a lot about the different risk or different things that could be happening. But of course, you have this great knowledge and there's, there's probably ways to benefit from that knowledge or to contact you. So what, 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 what should people be, be doing if they want to reach out to you, or know more or get help on this? So I developed a number of years ago and I've moved that along for the company I work for. I'm the director of safety and um, certification programs at Breezeway, which is a property care and operation software platform. And it's, I'm in a really unique position there because I don't do software, but we're there to support our customers or anybody really who wants to come to us and seek help. And we have checklists. I have checklists that can pretty much make it so that the only reason a guest is going to get injured in your short-term rental is if they trip over their own shoelaces. <laughs> we can help you dig down as deep as you want to go and talk and evaluate what the risk is. The number one cause around the world for injuries in a short-term rental is trips and falls. We know 83% of accidents come from trips and falls. So let's tackle that. Let's look at the way that, you know, carpets cause those or, steps or no handrails on the stairs and um, I'm happy to help anybody with that and as I said we can we have checklist guides we've kind of compiled everything that applies on an international level using international building codes Canadian codes UK codes everything we've really built it all together balance that with what we're seeing is insurance claims and lawsuits and news reports of the accidents are out there so that we can help anyone who wants to make sure that their guests are safe can do that, that they have the tools to do that. And I have those to share with them. Cool, so what we'll do, we'll post a link to, to the Brizzard yeah. website as well in the articles. People can really uh, directly access those resources. Justin, thank you so much for your time. You're and welcome. I, I wish you a great day and I hope we can see each other in person sometime soon. Yeah, we're gonna go, we're gonna go down to the Caribbean and inspect your property. Well, we're supposed to do that and maybe remotely. We'll see. <laughs> you take care. Absolutely. Thanks.